Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're getting closer and closer to Rivia Castle, where we'll uh, have to uh, battle it out in a decisive bout against our son. But before we can do that, there's still a lot of uh, Nilfgaardian camps to take out, and apparently they are lashing people here, so uh, let's clear that out. Let me tell you of Ravencluft, a quarry Meave passed by. A quarry with a dark history. For years earlier, its wall had collapsed, burying dozens alive. Scholars summoned from Oxenfurt were unanimous in their findings. The rock was fragile, further digging would likely cause slides. Meave had heeded the scholars' advice and closed the quarry by royal decree. Yet now, as she neared it, Meave could hear the even tap of pickaxes. She dispatched scouts to investigate. They returned promptly, their faces sullen, their cloaks blanched with a fine limestone dust. Quarries open anew, Your Grace. Nilf guardians. They've got folk in the pit working it. They appear to be from the surrounding villages. Interesting. Their engineers have found a way to render it safe. Secure the walls. I'd say that's right unlikely, Majesty. Judging by the fresh graves we saw. The Queen then turned to Reynard, as ever at her side. Reynard, what do you advise? As a soldier, my Queen, I'd advise against any kind of assault. The terrain's hard, unsuitable for a fight, and we've little to gain from a victory. As a man, however... Yes? ...to leave our folk in chains, in that death trap. It wouldn't be right. And therefore, we shall, of course, uh, attempt to liberate the quarry. Where that it says, attempt. That's making me curious. If I were to calculate in heart and mind, keep note of gains and losses... Began Meave. I'd bend the knee to the Imperials, just as Villain did. But bloody arithmetic won't dictate my course. For I do what's just. I do what's right. Follow me! Her troops followed without hesitation. Swords in hand, their hearts afire. There we go. Ravencluft. The battle at Ravencluft. Meave had expected easy victory. From her scout's reports, she learned the Lydians held a considerable num numerical advantage over the invading forces. Yet the Queen had not foreseen one critical Nilfgaardian strategy. The use of chained captives to fight opposite their own countrymen. So eliminate, eliminate all slave drivers. Sorry for that one. Those horses. Forcing my own subjects to fight us. There we go, a whole bunch of slave drivers with six damage, well, six power each. I think we could do something about that, because we have a few war wagons in our hands. So if we start out, what is this? So damage an ally by four and boost all other allies by one, and the slave driver move the lowest enemy next to this unit and lock it. That wish move the enemy back to its side and remove its lock. Okay, we'll start out as we usually do, so pulling back the war wagon. Playing another one, and then we'll go for yeah a grey rider and another war wagon, uh, like this yes. and like this. Tiny battles, hungry like a wolf. And then we'll end the turn. Wise choice. And that's a problem. I thought I was going to be able to clear them out with the six damage from the. Uh, the light infantry, but that's not gonna happen right now. So move another grey rider down. I live to send the turn. And they will be able to start damaging the grey riders, which is not Your a problem. Grace, if we begin killing the overseers, the laborers will turn against them. That is a good point, Reynard. Very good point indeed. Let's boost these guys. And get the Rivian Onager on the Slave Hunter. There he goes. And then end the turn. And then I'm going to start using my Stray Slinger. And Source there goes the one of those. Boots. Damaging my Onager. Which is still fine. Uh, Stray Slinger first. Let's damage one of those slave hunters and then two of our light infantry units and they're moving along because those light infantry units moved and then we have two more charges with the onager so let's damage uh the slave driver and this hmm, black infantry arblast might as well do that 
So he's prepped for the next round. I love the music in this battle. That will do. And there goes another one. Do more damage on the Onager. But then we play the blood card. Which gets us another Onager. And maybe a trinket? Yeah, a trinket. So, Onager over here in the back. Which gets boosted and uh, protected by the Grey Riders and then Barnabas. Feel any burning? See a local Eight armor, damage one. unit into a bear or draw two units and set their power to one. I think eight armor on the Onager might not be bad because it's protecting us from the damage then. Although, no, let's just go with the eight armor and put that on that Onager. And then we can use those remaining two charges to kill one of the Arbalests. Just like that and end the turn. Next turn we'll start filling up the War Wagons again. And we should be able to then play a Sapper. Which is going to be nice. So let's just play a War Wagon you over can here. Try to win them all, which puts it up to 9. I have... So that places 4 units. That would fill the top row if I play another one. But... I should have enough space to even do that. So let's just pick the War Wagon over here. Then play another War Wagon. And a Sapper, as we usually do. Like this, more wagon up top, but we made one more space down below, so let's use a sapper for that. And start whacking those light infantry units, which will be our turning points, because now we'll be able to uh, clear out most of the enemies, give us some more space, and that gives us a whole bunch of charges on the Onager as well. Uh, summon this unit from the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Might just leave it there. And then damage the slave hunter by one as well. I'm sadly killing off my own light infantry units. Which is not that big of a problem. But we also get eight charges on each onager. So let's just start clearing those out. Because I'm wondering what happens if we kill all the slave uh, drivers, I think. Yeah. Um, those guys won't do anything anymore. So let's focus on the slave drivers. And see what happens if we kill all of them off. So that's all of them. Ah, and there we go. Victory. Because we killed all the overseers. The Lyrians handily dispatched the Nilfgaardian overseers, more trained in the ways of the whip than the sword. Those who survived now found themselves shackled in the very chains they'd forced the peasants to wear. Peasants. Unfortunate souls. The cruel labor in the quarry had taken its toll. They stood before the queen, shrunken to skin and bone, clothed in tattered rags, their eyes reddened by dust. But in those eyes burned a brilliant fire. Muzzle. The grace. Them black clads treated us like dogs. Stripped us of dignity. So we beg you, give us arms. Let us march neath your banner. Tis a chance at revenge we seek, we want. Reynard leaned towards Meave and spoke in a scarcely audible whisper. Majesty, they've knelt. Not boots, not even foot wraps. To equip the lot, train them, would cost a small fortune. I don't really care. So conscript the peasants. We have enough money. I mean, 1,600 is nothing compared to the 45k we have. So conscript the peasants. It's true. They've knelt to the names, said the queen. Have few skills to offer and little strength. But to look in their eyes is to know they'll never flee. Never throw down their arms. Such recruits are worth coin in any amount. Emaciated, downtrodden, the peasants met the queen's offer with gratitude. They relished the thought of facing their tormentors in a fight. There we go. 80 people along... Side us now in the army 818 recruits which is amazing and i think right before we head into rivia castle i'll probably spend most of my money although unless we of course need it but uh, we have another report in our bag don't worry about things in the future 
Quarium Foreman's notes. Day 1 resumed operations. Day 12 Northern Wall collapsed. 12 deaths, 7 injuries. Day 20 sent for more slaves. 26 received slave transport. Many decrepit and unfit for labor. Assigned them. One third rations. Assholes. Day 30 Eastern Wall collapsed. 7 deaths, 5 injuries. And day 32 sent for more slaves. So uh, definitely glad that we stopped all that. Just gonna grab this. I mean, I feel like that's not even a question to spend those those funds because we got more than that back. Or pretty much the same amount. Did we actually kill this? Yeah, we killed this, okay. So let's keep moving north towards Rivia Castle. I think we'll have to cross a bridge in a minute. There we go, crossing the bridge and we get to another village, Cavaldon. Meave's force reached Cavaldon, a small, run-down town. The Blackclads, they've a strong garrison in place, proclaimed her scouts upon returning from a foray. And they stand prepared for a siege. Their stores overflow, and we see ballistas, scorpions. Cavaldon can be taken, began Raynard hesitantly, but not without losses. Considerable losses. A retreat. Is that what you advise? I fear the soldiers wouldn't take to such a course. They're eager, Your Grace. They've a fire in them. Order a retreat and you could devastate morale. Okay, then there's no question, I suppose. Order an assault on Cavaldon. Our losses may be heavy, said me, drawing her sword. But I'll make certain the vile invader suffers even more. Order the troops to prepare. We will attack. Soon after, the Lyrians moved on Cavaldon, war drums rumbling in step to their march. On the walls, the Nilfgaardians stood poised to defend. Well, we're gonna face them with a lot more than that. The Collaborator, by the way, it's a curious title. The Siege of Cavaldon. When the Leyans approached the walls of Cavaldon, they were greeted with a hail of bolts and arrows. The Nilfgaardians had made clear they had no intention of surrendering the city without a fight. Yet, if they believed such a tactic sufficient to discourage me, siege, a harsh truth awaited them. So it's a shortened battle. I won't leave a single There we go. Nothing for those come. My, my, now that is some fancy weaponry. But it's still got that new war machine smell. <laughs> new war machine smell. Okay, heavy fire scorpion damage all enemies by one. And it does explode when you kill it, so... Let's start as we usually do. War wagon. Pull it back. And we get another... Prey rider and a war wagon. Oh, you know what? Might as well just go all out and go with two war wagons. So one over here and one over here. And then the third. There we go. Wise choice. Now I need to be careful. So first things first, the Rivian knowledge it. That gives us two charges to do whatever we want with. So let's attack the castle gate for now and then turn. So next up will be the Nirvana runestone. Although I feel like we might actually lose the onager in a second. So let's just place the other onager and damage the castle gates like that. Should have placed it up top. Because now it of course kills everything. Automatically for us. And there goes the gates. If we get one more on the gate. One more. Nope, not on the gate. Okay. And that gives us one charge on the energy, sadly. Okay. Now. I don't have any death wish units anymore. So let's just play blood. And play Raynard. And... Ooh, Egg has a lot of power already. Because otherwise he's going to the graveyard, so might as well just play Egg. So two of our strongest we people, Raynard and Egg on the field. And then Where's we can the kill the castle gate. Two on us, and then we have nine charges. I think I should probably focus on the heavy fire scorpion first. Which I can just about kill. 
And that takes out that. And then remove the armor of the enforcer. And then the turn. They keep drawing cards. And they keep being able to damage us as well. But... Grey Rider first. Naturally. And the turn. Life is mine now. And they're going for Egg all the way. But let's play Neve first. Let's pull back one of the War Wagons. And then replay both of them. So we have our final batch of... Wait, where are they? Ah, there's one. Wait, there's three of them, right? Must have tossed one away. So let's put the war wagon down. And our final onager. So war wagon over here. Can't take it gets boosted. And the onager over there. And gets boosted. Then we can play the Lyrian. Hmm. Should probably focus on... Getting stuff in here first. So, light infantry units. Three and then destroy them. Which gives us three times six damage as well. Then we can kill that one. That are blessed. And then we have five more charges. That's four on this one. And one on the other one. There we go. Cleared up most of it. That was nothing to smell, folks. So, marching orders, and use Meave again to get the war wagon out, and get us another war wagon again with the, hmm, just Barnabas, Barnabas is going to be fine, so, should have done that the other way around, but, there we go, war wagon, like a wolf, I am. Um, and Barnabas, supposed to be any smoke. damage the highest units on the battlefield by up to... So highest is my unit, so I'm not going to do that. Move six random enemies or play two blitz units. I'm going to do that then. Um, a drummer. Army's a waste of time for one. And a drummer. Left, right. So left, next turn we'll right. start destroying our light infantry units, so that's fine. And we get two more charges with the onagers. And that's right. And that's that, so let's just use the sapper. Clear out our side of the field. Like this. One, two, three, four, a five, and six. Then damage the Imperium forces. And there we go. Killed most of them. And let's just kill the rest off like that. And see what else we can pull. We have Dogger 2 Blades. I don't think there's too many of them in the graveyard. Yeah. So that stays limited. There we go. I think we got this. So the Blacksmith is going to allow us to replay Neve again. So there we go. Marching orders. Then we should probably... Damage that Alba Pikeman by a bit. So that's eight. Like this. And then use a Disgaste Warrior to clear that up. That removes one card from his hand. And the drummer gets us another yes. Grey Rider. Okay, gonna have to be careful what I do with my last card. They couldn't heal anything because there isn't anything left. So let's use the Lyrian Blacksmith once again. Something from nothing. It's exactly what I do. And do... Blood then, I suppose. So let's use Blood and get... Gascon and Arnulf. And I think I won't be able to play Arnulf anymore. So let's just put Gascon over here. Nothing personal, I assure you. And then we can use Meave to replay the Disgraced Warrior. So that gives us uh, the Pitfall Trap and maybe even the Forager. Yeah, the Forager. Pitfall Trap over here. And Forager over here. Just grab those two. And then... We can actually play the drummer again as well. With another two side that. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use the onager so they can get boosted on the field. 
And then the last regiment drummer is a sapper. He's gonna be a right good levy. Which we can use to just beautiful. damage that one. And just kill off the medic. And that's the end of that. Pass. Yeah, street guards left, but I don't think it'll matter. So more healers. The 42 tonic or swallow, as it's usually called. Gets another card and oh wow. Okay. We did it, your grace. The city is ours. But not a lot of losses, I would say. The Nilf Guardians had indeed prepared well, with grapples to repel hook ladders from the walls and long spears to rain down upon attackers far below. Meave managed on the fourth attempt to breach the defenses, but did so scrambling over the corpses of her own men. The Queen was in the field tent when Reynard arrived with surprising news. To be heard over the groans of the wounded, he had to raise his voice. Your Grace, a delegation of townsfolk. They seek an audience urgently. Dozens of burghers stood before the tent. Between them and the Queen, a man knelt in shackles. His face was bloodied as if he'd endured a vicious beating just moments before. Who's this? Our blacksmith, Todor! Snarled a priestess in a frayed robe. He betrayed you, Your Grace. Soon after the Nilfgaardians Guardians arrived, within hours in truth, he offered his labor and strength. They didn't even need to ask. Forged arms and armor for them, all for Imperial gold. Meave gripped the beaten man's beard, tugged upwards, and looked him in the eyes. Did you forge the hooks and the tips for those spears? I... I, I did, Your Grace. It was fine work, growled the Queen. Damned fine. Show him mercy, milady! cried a withered old man in a flower spattered apron. When a black clad bastard captured my son, they were eager to hang him. Todo spoke for him, saved his life. He helped me too! hollered a woman in the crowd. I were hungry. He shared what little he had. The townsfolk began shouting over one another. Some told of the blacksmith's noble deeds. Others labelled him a traitor deserving of a cruel and violent end. Meave turned back towards the field hospital, pondering the case, then spotted her soldiers' corpses laid out in rows. Had it not been for Todor, there might not have been so many. Release the blacksmith, have him lashed, or kill the collaborating blacksmith. Um, I feel like this game continuously punishes you for going for the middle ground. So having him lashed is kind of a Kind of mercy. It's the better of two worlds. He did some good things. He did some bad things. Ah, there's no real good way to go around. He was afraid of what the Nilf Guardians would do to his son. There wasn't any clue that Meave would actually return. So I understand why he did it. But uh, yeah, let's release the blacksmith. This man forged arms for the Nilf Guardians. Tis true, said Meave to the crowd. Yet you, Baker, baked the bread they ate. And you, Potter, stained the cups from which they drank. Willingly or not, each of you aided the invader. Where does pursuing one's craft end and treason begin? I've no answer to that. So I shan't punish any for doing merely what's theirs to do. Upon hearing the verdict, the Queen's troops stared in disbelief, then began to boil. As she walked back calmly to the tent, they jeered and hissed. At the last, it took Reynard to calm them down. Meave had saved Todor, but she was convinced she'd not see the blacksmith again. Come evening, he returned to the camp with a wagon full of arms so new they shone. If it weren't for you, your grace, they'd have torn me to bits with the bare hands, he said, kneeling before her. I thank you for speaking up for me, for my innocence, that is. I've a gift for you. A gift I know you'll put to proper use. Meave took a spear in hand, put it to her shoulder, and gazed down the shaft. The tip glowed red in the light of the setting sun. Of that, my friend, you can be sure. There we go. We got some weapons in return. Neve's spear. Ooh. We got another weapon. Awesome. But apparently that's not... Oh yeah, there goes morale. That's not the only weapon. I feel like we missed a few weapons because of our decisions then. Um, which is interesting. 
I'm gonna check that out. So Meave Spear Order. Set a unit's power to 1, then trigger all allies' loyal abilities. Cooldown 4. So one less than... Oh. Yeah, two less than Meave and Granny Blade. And it could potentially be incredibly powerful. But I feel like I have a lot more fancy combos with Meave and Granny Blade. So I'm gonna keep that, but... Yeah, Neve Spear. Cool card. And including her Scar, of course, because she couldn't have gotten this card without her Scar. So, and that is not the only card we got. We also got Muzzle, which is probably taking over an enemy's unit. Seize a bronze enemy unit. And of course, cannot target bosses. Okay, there we go. That's all the new cards. And let's talk to these people. Freedom will cost us dearly. Dearly indeed. Freedom will cost okay, us... Okay, not really positive, that. How could you, your majesty? He's crafted weapon for at Black Clats. The very same what killed our lads. How could you, your majesty? Okay, yeah. Because, How could you, your because of the explanation I gave you, buddy. Shut up. Okay. Um, Is there anything else in this village? Can I somehow actually push my morale a bit? Because this is uh, starting to hurt. Your Majesty, the hut's untouched. Ripe grain in the fields, tis hard to believe. I feared we'd have another Edurn here, with the black clad setting fire to all. I feared nothing of the sort. Nilfgaard's not stupid. Lands it aims to hold it doesn't destroy. And Willem did bend the knee to the Emperor. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. We didn't fight back, so... For some reason, well, it, it kind of feels like Film made the right choice. Because don't forget, because Film's decision, because of Film's decision, the Nilfgaardians didn't wage battle on these lands too much. They didn't destroy the, the villages and the, the people here. Well, they kind of did, if you look at the bottom, but still. They didn't go as far as they would have like they did in Adern, but still. They also caused, I mean, it, it's, it has a lot of consequences, right? If we would have stayed, we probably would have lost in a straight up fight. But because Willem betrayed his own mother, she needed to go elsewhere, find a guerrilla army, defeat Nilf Guardians along the way, and now be strong enough to take back her own lands, which is kind of because of Willem. Not directly, of course, but still, it's because of his decision. Um, before we go any further, we're getting really close. I think about three or four episodes left. So uh, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.